this is a special treat because we're back in September 5th of 1901 and it is the Leland Hotel in Chicago. We have two dueling associations and out of that came the National Association of Professional Baseball Leagues and the guy that presided over the meeting. <laughs> Not true, but pretty close to it. The commissioner, president, poobah of minor league baseball, Pat O'Connor, it is a pleasure. Thank you. Rick, it's always good to be with you. Trace that history of how minor league baseball came to be. Well, minor league baseball came to be basically because, as you said, there was a bit of a war over players and territories and all of the business of baseball issues. And um, the major leagues started picking on some of the minor leagues and they just decided we'll get together and if they're going to pick on us they're going to pick on all of us yeah. uh, and in 1901 formed, signed the agreement 1902 the first season to form the National Association of Professional Baseball Leagues it has morphed and evolved it's expanded it's contracted it's it's reacted to the social times it was uh, in its heyday and then World War II knocked it down as it did a lot of things in yeah. this country from a commerce standpoint uh, at its peak 430 uh, eight clubs. Today we operate off of a d domestic market that's 160 teams. It's a game that has changed cyclically several times. And today the simplest way to maybe describe what minor league baseball is and isn't, it's an entertainment venue that is the home for major league baseball minor league players. We're out of the player business in every yeah, respect. Yeah. Major league clubs own the contracts, they assign their players to us. So we're responsible for the venue and making sure that these young men get their at-bats and get to play and develop. You've presided over that for a long time now. As, re as, as it relates to community input and impact, substantial community involvement, long history, long branding, giving back to the community, talk about that. Absolutely. I mean, you know, w what we are, we are grassroots baseball. Yeah. And we are in the community. We are vested and invested in the community. We are everything from Little League to every charity listed to the Chamber of Commerce. We're there 365 days a year. We are that city's team. And a draped over your knee is a perfect example. That's the El Paso Chihuahuas, and the Chihuahuas are El Paso's team. It just so happens that every player that play there is from San yeah. Diego's system. Yeah. Uh, people don't know that. They don't care about that. These are these, these local communities' teams. In excess of $40 million of goods and services and cash every year goes into the communities from our clubs. Uh, we provide jobs, we provide entertainment, but more than anything, we provide affordable family entertainment for communities all across this country. Without getting political, it's still tough out there for a family. And what we provide is an outlet, a, a place where they can go and exhale. You know, one of the greatest examples that, that, that I used that proved to me we were on the right track, 2008 and nine. Companies too big to fail are failing. You know, Shearson, yeah. Lehman Brothers, they go out of business. You know, we don't lose but 5% of our business because our clubs reach out and felt America at its heartland suffering. Yeah. We got that 5% back and then some in two years. But when you go to our games and you walk through the stands and you see grandma and grandpa, mom and dad and kids, sometimes the same family unit in the same stretch of bleachers, that you can't tell me that's not good for America and you're not vested, invested and connected to your community. Well, and even different and better than that, or at least expanded from that, the charitable component, the philanthropic component, you really uh, are the poster child for charity and sports. We, we really are from the standpoint that, that we penetrate virtually every aspect, every level from preschool to uh, senior citizen homes and every stop in between. Yeah. You know, whether it, it is philanthropic giving, whether it is mentoring, whether it's a reading program, whether it's a, a food bank, uh, you know, you go across. When you have 160 clubs and they draw 42 million people uh, across this country, you're connected and your causes are connected. We go everything at the national level from ALS uh, down to Bear Find, which is an, an organization that is organic, grown from a, a former minor league player, player that finds missing children. You know, in minor wow. league baseball, we found 348 missing children last year. Wow. There's value there. Is it a dollars and cents equation? Maybe not. Uh, but there's a lot more that goes beyond that to the fabric of this country. Our primary goal is to develop players and then entertain America. Yeah. And we're doing both in, in a, at a very good pace right now. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Pat O'Connor. Thank you very much, man. <laughs> Thanks, Rick.